Kev and Wild Ginger Running. This is the live show. It's Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. UK time, and I am really excited tonight. I'm here with best running book winner and best blog winner at the National Running Awards. It's Alistair Jones, poet and blogger. How are you, Alistair? I'm really well, thank you. Woo Yay, woo! <laughs> we're pretending we're a big audience. <laughs> what have you been up to today? Um, today has been a little bit of running. I have taken advantage of the opportunity to meet a friend, um, maybe sit around in the sunshine. There could have been beer involved. It's been very good. And Aww. the run to come a little bit later on when it cools down. Yes, it's really hot today, isn't it? So thanks so much for not just having a barbecue in your back garden tonight. I <laughs> really appreciate <laughs> you coming on. <laughs> oh, absolute um, pleasure. So tonight we're going to be talking mainly about your poems, which I've been following for a, for a while. I've been sharing them on Twitter. Um, but you also write a blog as well, don't you? And you won an award for that. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, well, really the blog is the micro blog i think it's expanded a little bit more now into a, a larger blog called Ardbark running but um it started as the micro blog and it was just to encourage people along uh, to provide a little bit of motivation to tell people that they were good enough i think uh, we all know there's a huge correlation between mental health and running and a lot of runners uh, don't don't appreciate how good they are. They look down a little bit on their efforts. They compare themselves to others, and I wanted to just help people feel good about themselves and good about their running. Yeah, I, that really resonates because you get a lot of people, like especially like my mum, who's just started running in her sixties, and she's always she? say, yeah, she's always saying I'm too slow, um, and it just really annoys me because she's not too slow. <laughs> she's still a runner. Um, so it doesn't matter how fast you go and I think a lot of your poems and, and, and your blog posts uh, obviously reflect that. Um, so um, so you've won a couple of awards for, um, for your book of poems which is going to be one of my competition prizes this month. Um, Excellent. Which is, just fantastic. It looks so good for you. Oh thanks, yes. Well I love all the pictures inside. Um, and we'll get on to some merch as well that you can buy at the end because some Thank people you. might want some more poems on their walls and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so you've won a couple of awards at the National Running Show. I've got a photo that I can put up here that you sent me. Um, how chuffed were you to win both of those awards? Like, How does it feel when your name gets read out on that big stage? Um, I think to begin with, with the blogging award, it was a complete surprise. Um, we've been invited to attend the uh, running awards with the charity that I run for, Spinal Research, and it was just to go along and have a great evening and to sit there and enjoy good food in the company of friends and to listen to some great runners talking. Um, so Spinal Research won uh, an award for small charity. One of our other charity runners, Eric Keeler, won the, prize, uh, the bronze prize for best blog and then bizarrely right at the end they gave running Mr. Jones the gold award. Oh wow, that's amazing. It and was amazing and a huge surprise. Yeah, oh, that's absolutely fantastic. You must have inspired a lot of people then. Do you get much feedback from the blog and the poems um, when you put them out on social media? Uh, yes, I think um, I, I definitely have a demographic and my demographic is nearer the back of the pack. Um, you know, probably the people that I naturally run with. Because There's I'm, a lot I'm more of those people, aren't there? There's a lot more of us yeah, than there I, are of elites. <laughs> absolutely. I, you know, I have more enthusiasm than ability. I think that's how I describe my running. Um, and yeah, I, I think my voice resonates with with those people. Those people are doing their very best, but perhaps their best isn't as as good as they may want it to be. Fantastic. Um, well, you're certainly re resonating with a lot of people here who are listening live. Um, so I'll just read a few out to you so that you can get a bit of a sense of, of everybody watching. Um, so Guy Greatrex says, looking forward to this. This should be very interesting. Um, Sebastian says, hey, everybody. Um, Philip Haddock's watching as well. He says, hey. Um, Run Simon Run says, can't wait for this one. Al Jones is awesome and such a great guy. There you go. Well, to be honest, Simon Gerhardt is also awesome and a very, very good runner, as well as being a great guy. <laughs> yeah, and he also puts up a word of the day on his Twitter, um, Brilliant, which I it? really like. And he says, um, he emailed me the other day because he's one of my patrons, and he said that sometimes your poems are, like inspire him with his word of the day, so that's really cool. Uh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's nice that we can feed each other. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
really um, lovely. I find him an inspirational runner. A very approachable guy as well, isn't he, Simon? Yeah. Yeah, he's super, super lovely. He's really nice. Um, and he's watching right now, so he's going to be super happy about that. <laughs> in about 90, there's a bit of a delay, so in about 19 second, 90 seconds time, he'll probably be like, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, who else have we got? We've got Graham Bang, we've got Hannah Baisley, we've got Sharon Houston, Abby Norman is here, Antonio Carpinelli is here, Nadia Federman is here, and James Fowler is here as well. So tons of people watching, um, and there are more as well. These are just the, the people in the chat who have said hello so if you want us to read your name out then um, or if you have a question for Alistair then do type it into the live chat and we'll see if we have time to answer your question um, but Alistair we're gonna you're gonna read out some of your poems tonight but first let's just I want to just get a little bit more of a sense of um, you, who you are as a person like did you run as a kid how did you get into running um, what what went on with your running journey Okay, I, I ran at school, I did cross country and hated it for the most part because we were shouted at in muddy fields. Oh, I can and totally relate to that, I hated yes. cross country, it put me off running, um, it totally put me off running. I was phobic of running, so I totally hear you. <laughs> yeah, um, but then when I had just, just turned 50, um, I had a persistent cough uh, I it stayed for so long um, they sent me for a chest x-ray to see the state of my chest and thankfully I had an amazing radiographer who could see that my chest was clear but noticed a problem with my heart wow. so I got called straight in a uh, cardiologist uh, sat me down and said you need to change the way you live you're too heavy you don't do enough exercise you need to change your diet and I started running the next day Wow, that's amazing because if you're a heavier person, it is actually harder to start running, isn't it? I would have thought like maybe you start walking first and then running. So how did that go? Uh, I downloaded Couch to 5K and I have to say that uh, I think our 90 seconds we were expected to run. And after I'd run 90 seconds, I couldn't bring myself to stop. Oh, wow. So you are so quite a naturally fit person underneath and, and you just had to kind of reignite that flame. There might be something in that. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant program. Catch to 5K, I think it's incredible. I think there's a switching point at about four or five weeks where it takes a huge step up and you need to mentally be prepared for that and prepared to stick on that week until you can go past it. But um, for me, I think once I decided that running was going to be the thing I was going to do, I just kept running as far as I could. And I think it was about 25 minutes the first day. And um, yeah, then it gradually went up. Oh, brilliant. So was that in 2016, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, 2016. And then was it last year, 2019, that you did your first marathon? Last year I did my first first and second marathons, yes. Brilliant. And, and how did that go? Like, like, tell us about the first one. Okay, so London was so exciting. It's just such a brilliant event. Um, I'd been injured for a few weeks beforehand. In fact, I, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to run. I don't think I'd run for four weeks uh, before um, London Marathon. I did a little 5K on the Thursday before and then uh, set off. And I don't know why, but I thought I'm going to go for a sub four. Wow. But stupid, Claire. <laughs> because well, if I said it to I you, would, you just said, I wouldn't have said just that. calm down. <laughs> It's kind of ambitious though at London because you do tend to get people in fancy dress that will just stop right in front of you, I've heard. I had a friend that was really annoyed because like about five Mr. Men just completely blocked her path so she ended up running about 27 miles kind of zigzagging between everybody. Well there's that as well and I, I wasn't aware of any of that. So I got to halfway I think in about 201 and realised there was no way I was going to run the second half in 159 so just slow down a little bit. But then uh, my best friend, who was also running, but was going to run much quicker than me, I think about the 30k mark, I passed him and he, he was injured. Mm. And yeah, uh, so I decided I was going to just bring him home. So it was closer to five hours than four oh. Oh. that we finished in. So you sacrificed your race to just run with him? 
do you know what if i was a lovely person and a bit of a hero i think you could say it that way <laughs> i think there's an alternate version that might have said i used robin as a little bit of an excuse to just come <laughs> home easy oh nice one and um, but you, you got it done and then in the next done. marathon did you get your four hours be, or be no, closer I, to your four hours i didn't i got closer so i was under four and a half wow and i was really pleased with my run it was in berlin and i'd have to say um, I mean, I've only run the two, but if you ever get a chance to run Berlin, beautiful city, amazing course, really, really well organised marathon, it's a fantastic weekend away. Oh, and, and I am quite interested because this um, it, it's like road running, these marathons that you've been doing. Do you do any off-road running as well, like trails around parks and countryside? I, I do a little bit, and that is definitely the, the way forward for me. Uh, I was planning, I think, on really concentrating on this being a huge marathon year for me. And then I was thinking of going on to the trails afterwards. So I think it's a, a really natural progression, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. Especially if you just do running for the love of it, it really makes sense to do it in such a beautiful place and, and have even more of an excuse to stop and look at the view and chat to people and eat cake. <laughs> I, I, th I think that getting away from analysing your time in the pace that there must be a real freedom that comes from that and I'm really looking forward to that yeah yeah I think you'll really really love it um, and um, you do training camps don't you Claire yes I do thank you for mentioning so, that I so do really, I need to come along don't yeah, I? I've been that'd my be great. And stuff. I need to come and yeah you can teach me to trail run properly yeah exactly we've got one in October this year which fingers crossed will go go ahead depending on it has to, doesn't it? Everything so. will be fine by October hopefully. because we need it to be for you. Yes. Well, maybe for small events. Yes, for small groups, hopefully it will be fine. And then I've got another one in April. So, like, if everything's not okay by April, I think we all need to go and live on the moon by then anyway, don't we? <laughs> I think you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That's very good. Maybe we could get you along and you could read some of the poems, to people. We could have your <gasps> book. We could have your book on sale as well. That, um, run a book for real runners and we and we will just uh, we will have some readings from this book uh, from Alistair and Mo but I, I also just want to ask you before we do that um, have you always written poems and blogged about your running is this something that comes naturally to you or was this a completely new thing when you started the running I, I think when I'd been running a little while I realized that I thrived on a bit of motivation and so I set up a Twitter account to provide a little bit of motivation, just some nice little motivational phrases. Often at that time, they were kind of borrowed or stolen from other people, you know. And, um, but, but yeah, to, to just add a voice to the community. Um, the poems came a little bit later on, actually, when I needed to raise some money for charity, because I took a charity place at London. Um, and I was, I was absolutely shocked. Yeah. Do you not agree that the running community is one of the largest hearted communities that you could ever be a part of? Yeah, they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And most runners are just really supportive and lovely. And you, you find that people who aren't runners, are, are, those are the people that shout at you on the street. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm totally blown away. When you're, when you're celebrating, they will cheer alongside you. When you're low, they'll pick you up. And when you ask for help, which is what I did with my, uh, you know, fundraising. The, the strangers would just come along and donate to a cause that obviously some were invested in, but sometimes it was just almost as a gift to you they were doing it. That's really lovely. Um, did it you is. Have, it's beautiful. Did you have any uh, a particular association with the Spinal Research Charity that you run for, um, or did, is it just one that is it close to your heart, or or why did you choose that one? Um. I, I knew that uh, the best route into London would be through a charity place. So I applied to six charities when um, when you could, and out of those six, five sent invitations. But then a, a friend who I was very close to, um, uh, Rainbow uh, Claire um, in Sheffield, she she had been in a wheelchair. She'd required spinal surgery. And so she took a marathon place with spinal research. And the events organizer said there, if you've got any friends, we've got a few more places. And so although I'd kind of half accepted a place with someone else, she said, look, come and be part of this team. Well, 
it's the best thing that happened to me. Um, I, it wasn't a cause that I was naturally invested in. It's definitely a cause I've become invested in. They do fantastic work. They um, uh, make the very most of the funds that they're given. You know, such a high proportion of the funds that they're given goes into the research that they do, and it really makes a difference. They're also the most supportive charity that I've come across. So the events organizer runs most of the races with us. They will um, suggest fundraising ideas and often come and do fundraising ideas with us as well. So yes, yeah, if, if anybody wants to do a charity race, I would recommend Spinal Research mm. as a place to go. Yeah, they do sound brilliant. That's really, they are really good. Amazing. And very very much a part of a team, you feel, not just somebody who wants you to raise money for them. Yeah, and you've gone back and, and you've raised money for them time and time again now. So that's brilliant that they, they really value yes, long term relationships. I've become an ambassador for the I've become an ambassador for the charity. I, and it is a cause now I'm thoroughly invested in. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing, and um, and we we have a question actually um, oh. um, from one of my patrons who is called Guy Greater X, and he um, he would like to know, and I, I think maybe the charity inspires you, um, but he wants to know what inspires you to write poems. Is it personal experience, or is it things like the charity, or um, what kinds of things will inspire you to write a poems? Okay, so if I could just wind back very quickly. Um, when people started making donations, I, I just wanted to sort of do little thank yous, and I wrote a couple of thank you poems. And then people started coming back and saying, well, if I made a donation, would you write me a poem? So it snowballed that way. And I realized that poems were actually something that somebody, that people liked generally. So from that point on, I tried to put my motivation um, in poetic form, I mean poetry. It's not Shakespeare, is it, Claire? It, okay, oh, it but... is. It's profound. <laughs> I would say. Oh, I love it. I, some, some. You don't have to be all like, all like deep and meaningful, flowery words. Like sometimes the simplest things are the most profound. Oh well, that's really lovely of you to say. So uh, going back to the uh, question, what provides motivation? Well, uh, sometimes you realise there are little things going on in the running community. Um, at the moment, the, uh, the motivation has come from lockdown and having to perhaps adjust to running solo, perhaps the disappointment of not uh, facing races. So it might be emotions either that I felt, things that I've experienced, things that friends have said to me. Um, somebody said uh, a few weeks ago just how important mantras were to them. So I thought, well, let me do a little sort of poem about mantras. So yeah, bits and pieces. Sometimes it can be a, a chance remark that somebody makes, or sometimes it's something that you just feel a little vein that's running through the running community at the moment that you want to try and tap into. Oh, well, I think we ought to hear one of your poems. Um, have you got a few there prepared? Like, or have you got a favorite one that you wanted to read out or a, like an appropriate one for, for right now? Okay, um, I think this is a, a poem that probably resonates with a lot of the people who like my poems um, and uh, gets to the heart of the sort of uh, runner that I am okay so my favorite kind of runner the ones I like the most don't always run the furthest or come fast the first past the post they may not be the thinnest or run the fastest miles but they usually have the biggest hearts and also the biggest smiles so I hope you feel amazing each time you wear your vest and never listen to the voice that says you're second best. Oh, that's lovely. I love that oh, one. Oh, Claire, thank you. <laughs> and how, how long does it take you to write a poem like that? Do, is, does, does some come really quickly or do, do you really have to work at it? Is there a, is there a creative process? Um, yeah, I don't think I've had poet's block yet <laughs> um people will know that my out my output isn't amazing i try and do a poem every other day that sounds um, pretty amazing to me i was thinking okay. oh maybe once a week <laughs> um often they'll come while i'm running ah, very because interesting. you have that you have a natural rhythm don't you while you run mm. your feet will give you a sort of rhythm yeah. sometimes words come in and I'll sort of pull my phone out and I'll just say a couple of sentences in there and that'll get the poem started and then try and try and finish it off when I come home. Or sometimes it's just a case of sitting there until you put the words in order. Yeah, 
there. Ah, oh, that's so interesting. Um, and um, oh, is uh, somebody liked your poem? I'm just going to read you a comment from the live. And John Nyston says, "Excellent poem." And we've got some clapping hands from Guy Greatrex as well. Um, oh, and thank you, Guy. <laughs> Philip Paddock also says, "Excellent poem." Um, so everybody is very much appreciating appreciating your poems. Um, thank you. So that was one of the ones that was quite popular. You saw, um, you yes. saw on social media. Is that is that the same as your favourite one, or do you have one that means more to you personally? Um, yeah, I found one that I'd say is probably my favourite because it makes a statement about running, which um, I think highlights something that's entirely unique about this sport that we do. So this is my favourite. So, can you play golf with Tiger or kick a ball with Kane? Can you ride your bike with Geraint T, however hard you train? But I've been at a start line with Kipchoge and Armo. It's true they ran it very fast while I ran it quite slow. But I'm so proud to be a runner because our sport is so unique. It really is inclusive. There is no special clique. Oh, that's really brilliant. It's definitely so true, isn't it? We can run the races that the world records are set in. Yeah. And we actually line up on that start line. How amazing is that? You know, you see all the little boys who go and play football in the park. They would love to play at Wembley in a cup final one day. Oh, yeah. It doesn't happen for many of them. But for us as runners, we can make the dream come true. Yes, and um, we can even see those runners as well, quite, kind of quite close up. Especially, um, yeah, if you if you're watching at the start and, and you can get close enough, you can actually see them. Yes, it's just um, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, something else that I've really liked, you know, the the occasions that I've been able to meet some of these um, elite athletes, is how they are so like us. They're approachable. They're fun. They they love talking about running, and they love runners who are sub elite yes. so much they realise it's very much the same sport yes yeah definitely there's not the same sort of kind of ego and uh, like a higher status level that goes with some other sports that you might see as well absolutely I'm just going to read you out some more comments there's, there's um, okay. a bit of a delay on the programme that I use versus people watching it live so some comments are starting to come in now which is great so um, Graham Brown says um, that poem is running in a nutshell. She thinks you've really hit the nail on the head there. Thank you, Graham. Um, and Hannah Baisley said, um, I, have, I admit I hadn't heard the poems before, but I did love the one you posted in the group, Claire. It's me and most other runners. Um, I posted one about um, people having red faces and um, being sweaty and stuff, and, and <laughs> Hannah really identified with that, so that was cool. Well, if she saw me run, she would know that that was almost autobiographical. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is for a lot of people. <laughs> Apart from Elliot Kipchoge, we all look like like we're half dying when we run. <laughs> yeah. Um, and John Dyson says he loves that one. It's so true that we can run in the same race as our heroes. Thank you. That's great. Um, so that's a couple of your poems um, read out that are, are your favourites and, and if you don't mind I'd just like to read out a couple of my favourites of your poems because I saw one on Twitter um, the other day so this is a fairly recent one um, and I, I really liked it because I identified with it and then the other one is one that I will have at the start of my book which is the ultimate trail running handbook um, and I'm really thrilled that um, that you're allowing me to put one of your poems in there. So I'll just. I'll I'm just... really thrilled to be in your book. Yeah, and, and hopefully. When is it coming out, Claire? Uh, January 2021. Um, we hope to launch it at the running show, um, the National Running Show. Excellent. So, uh, my favourite from you is um, this one from Twitter, which says, I don't care how long you took, I won't analyse your pace. Maybe you took a selfie. That is so me. But I like <laughs> I like your smiley face. So what if you walked a bit or stopped to take a wee? Please run exactly how you want. It will not bother me. This is your run. Run to please yourself, not to please others. Excellent. Yes. I'm really pleased you like that. I love um, it. And I especially like the way that it sort of it sort of rhymes to start with. 
Um, but then the last three sentences are just like boom, boom, and boom. <laughs> yes, uh, and there's a little bit of a story behind that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, quite recently, uh, Strava made a change um, in the way that they uh, display time. So when you initially look at your sort of little race report, it will it will say moving time. And for most of us, that would be the time that we count. We think, oh, I've run 10K in that amount of time. But if you touch it and then go through to the fuller page, it comes up with this little devil, which is elapsed time. So if you have sort of stopped for a selfie or stopped for a wee, or perhaps taken a phone call, or maybe you do what I, a terrible habit that I used to get into, which was set my watch up so that it would kind of catch the GPS, and then maybe go off and have a drink and then put my trainers on and then start running. And because I had auto pause on it, the clock would start at that ah. point. And you'd think you'd done 10K in an hour. And then elapsed time would say, oh, you've done 10K in an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there were a few sort of spiteful people who'd say, well, you can't say you ran 10K in an hour because oh. you ran 10K in 90 minutes. Oh. Well, I don't really think anyone cares unless you're going for some kind of record or some like first or third on podium place. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, I think a few people got rattled by that. And so the poem was an answer to that. You know, your run is your business and nobody really has a right to question you. Unless, like you say, you know, you're claiming a PB or you're saying that you've broken a world record. Yeah. But, but really, even in those circumstances, who are we to judge each other's runs? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, so the poem was an, an answer to that situation. Yeah. There's, I've seen some people um, complaining on Strava of people who have been logging like 0.5 mile walk. Um, and I'm just like, who cares? <laughs> like, who cares if someone's logging a 0.5 mile walk? Maybe they've been injured, maybe they're disabled. Maybe they just, every little bit counts to get them to this weekly total. If, if you're the kind of person that's gonna just go on Strava and just, I don't know, look at everybody else's stuff, then I think that's a little bit sad. <laughs> You, absolutely or who knows you know the black dog may have been sitting on their sofa next to them all yeah. day isn't it and for them getting out and doing that half mile yeah. is more of an achievement than me running a four-hour marathon someday yeah exactly i think no one knows and yeah just don't don't judge everyone and then um, and everyone on the live chat is agreeing with you here alistair so guy Greatrek says that poem is a great one it means lots to me um and sebastian says yeah it really resonates with him as well he's definitely guilty on fixating too much on the elapsed time okay i i <laughs> on the other side of the coin I make sure that I don't start my watch now until I start running. <laughs> yeah. And if I go for it, I try not to take a wee halfway through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think if you want to get your average time for the whole route, then, yeah, you've got to be like beep and then beep as if you're in a race. But if you don't mind, then it doesn't Absolutely. matter, does it? Just log it. And, um, and we've got an interesting question on the live chat here from Guy, um, who says, um, I can never understand what the difference between a runner and a jogger is. As a poet, it would be interesting to hear your thoughts. Excellent. OK, now this is a huge thing for me. If you run, you are a runner. I think jogging actually went out of existence in 1987, I think. <laughs> So I think people condescendingly talk about their running. They say, I went for a jog. But for me, if you run, it doesn't matter what pace you run at. The minute you lace up your trainers and you're doing more than walking, you're a runner and you're a real runner. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think jogging is just a, um, it's like a, a steady form of running, isn't it? Like I often refer to a warm up jog because you're going at a nice steady pace, but it is running. It's just it's a running. type of running. Yeah. 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 So has and that... I think if you say that, because uh, I've got a little um, uh, training program and it says, you know, run this at this pace and then a steady jog for 90 seconds or something. But it's all running, isn't it? And what we don't want is the term jogging used as a sort of almost an insult or condescendingly. Yeah. So joggers are runners too. 
Yeah, yeah, there can be a little bit of um, condescension going on, can't there, between like, oh, we are just a jogger. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really matter if you're having fun and you're getting your exercise. It doesn't matter what it is and, and what you want to call it. Um, and I just want to say a quick hello to your business partner, Rav Villan, who has just joined us in the live chat. So. Hi to you, really? Rav. Yes. That's surprising. Yeah, she is here. <laughs> um, so hopefully later in the year we'll be talking to Rav because she's doing this amazing running streak. Um, she's over 800 runs now um, every day. It must have taken, well, yeah, for years now. So hopefully once she's got to 1,000, I'll get her on and um, we can have a chat with her. Oh, the best bit of all would be if we could all run together. Yes, yes, by then, fingers crossed, we can, yeah. That would be so Wouldn't that cool. be awesome? Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, and uh, Philip Haddock says, um, uh, if your run puts a smile on your face and makes you happy, who cares what other people think? I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head there, Philip. Um, Definitely, Philip. And um, Nadia says, so true. Um, posting slow runs actually gave me a good bit of self-confidence to be okay with whatever times. So, yeah. Excellent. That's good. That's amazing. Um, and so I would just like to read another poem out now, um, which I'm going to put in my trail running book, because I know you said you want to get into trail running. This is really exciting, especially to my audience, because we're all like really keen trail runners. Um, so I'm just going to give everybody a sneak preview of what is in the book. Um, and hopefully they'll enjoy your poem so much that they will buy this book, which is called Run, a book for real runners. Um, and I can definitely recommend it. It's absolutely fantastic. It's so inspiring. Like, you know, like if you're kind of thinking, shall I run or shall I not run? All you have to do is just open this book and read all the poems and then you'll be lacing your trainers up. That's, that's how I think this book works. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a total book. You do try and give a little bit of mojo. Yes, it's a mojo book. It definitely is. So this is a poem about trail runs um, by Alistair. So trail runs aren't just about the power in your legs. They also reveal the size of your heart and the strength of your mind. Trail running helps ordinary people do extraordinary things. Keep running off road. Keep building a better you by Alistair Jones at Running Mr Jones. <laughs> I can't wait to trail run with you. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be so cool. It's going to be great. And then you can write tons more poems about trail running. Um, Definitely. So, uh, so now I just wondered if you have got, um, well, we've got a couple more questions from people. Um, but I just wondered um, if there's any advice you can give to people who might want to start writing poems about running. Because I really want to try it now. So I'm going to, over the weekend, try to write one. But have you got any, you any pointers for me and anyone else who wants to get started? Well, selfishly, Claire, I'd say don't make it too good. Okay, I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, obviously, your words are important, but more than wor your words, it's your feelings. So I think try and decide what you're trying to say. So, you know, in a couple of sentences, I want this poem to be about and be able to answer that question and then bring the words in to to meet that thought. I think sometimes we're so, uh, so co we concentrate so much on trying to get rhymes that we put the words ahead of the idea. Um, but I'd say let your poem be led by the idea yeah. and let the words follow afterwards. Okay, so I, I was just thinking I would probably just get so distracted by all the rhyming and I'd probably try to make a limerick. <laughs> like, like Guy is saying, um, what about doing a poem about a ginger runner? <laughs> so like, I'd probably do one like, once there was a ginger runner called Claire who la, 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 thought she would run Trails everywhere. Trails everywhere. Trails everywhere. See? For a dare. Oh. I like it. Oh my goodness. There's trails everywhere. You've just got it in one. Um, uh, I love how the poems come to you on runs. So I think I'm going to use that tip as well. I'm going to go out for a run and I'm going to try and make a poem like that as well. Um, and yeah, have, have any more tips or is it is it simply just go with the flow and, and get the, the feeling across? Um, should you have a dictionary and have a look through for in, important sounding words? Uh, well, no, although uh, there are really good apps or websites that help you find rhymes. Ah. 
So, you know, you could, if you've got a word that you really want in your poem and you want to find a rhyme, there, there are there are websites where I think Rhyme Zone is one where you can put your word in it and it'll come up with all the words that rhyme. So that that can be a sort of little tool that's a help sometimes. I, I guess something that they say if people are going to write is read. Mm. Read a lot. So probably if you want to write poems, I recommend <gasps> reading this. Get a book of poems <laughs> and read them all. to inspire you. I recommend Run, a book for real runners by Alistair Jones. <laughs> But yeah, I would think perhaps read a few poems and perhaps that way you would find a voice that you liked. Um, that, that might help. Yes, yeah, that sounds really good. And, and does it always have to rhyme? Because I've, I've noticed that sometimes yours do and then sometimes they don't. Do, like, how do you decide whether what's going to rhyme and what's not and if that's okay? Yeah, absolutely. I think sometimes a few... A few uh, uh, thoughts will c will come into rhyme in my head, and then perhaps I try and force the rest of the thoughts into a, a rhyming pattern. But sometimes the feeling, um, the feeling comes in words or in sentences that for me are enough. Um, that they, you know, I think they stand alone as they are, and that trying to bend them or reshape them to make them rhyme would perhaps dilute them a little bit. Yeah. So just to get the right rhythm going and the feeling will come across. Absolutely, because sometimes, you know, a little motivational mantra can be so powerful, can't it? It doesn't have to rhyme to be, to have sort of power and to resound with you. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good Perhaps advice. they decide for themselves a little bit, Claire. I mm -hmm. think there's something in that. Perhaps they just, perhaps the poems decide for themselves mm -hmm. if they want to rhyme. Yes, yeah. That's so interesting as a creative process. Um, and um, and we have a question on the live chat about the rhyming here from Chloe Mason, who's just joined, and she says, "Is it true that nothing rhymes with orange?" Oh, I think it's true. Yeah, unless the orange. Uh, what? What's a orange? Orange flange. Um, it's a made-up word. It's like the Grinch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think anything rhymes with orange. So. Don't ever put so, that at the end of a poem. Well, I'd a say line. if Chloe comes up with a line that ends in orange, she'd probably go for a non-rhyming poem then, wouldn't she? Perfect, exactly. That's brilliant. And um, so um, I have just shown the book here, which I just think is it's just absolutely gorgeous. So um, I just love how you've put a really pertinent picture with every single poem. Um, it just looks really beautiful. Um, but this isn't the only gift that people can buy from your shop, is it? Because um, you've got also wall prints and uh, desk uh, little like poems. To yeah, the desk we do well. small sort of uh, acrylic blocks, um, desk art. They could be, they can either be a sort of standalone piece of art, or perhaps you could use them as a paperweight um, on your desk, or photo tiles that go up on the wall with. Uh, different poems on mm. and they're, they're available on the website if people want to order them. Mm, fantastic, so they're available on your website and the book is available also on your website and there's a, I've put a link there uh, to just the Amazon link there um, okay. in the film and description. When we've finished what I'll do is I'll share you a special price link oh. for any of your followers who want to pick up a, a cheaper copy. Oh. Wow. Okay, that would be amazing. Yes, um, we'll Happy give that. To do that for yeah, you. we'll give that to the patrons, um, and it will also be available um, in my patrons competition, which will end at the end of May. It's a monthly competition, and we have a book as one of the prizes. Um, so one person will be um, getting this book through uh, through the post from you, Alistair. Maybe maybe you'll even sign it. I think you signed that one. Just here. That's a nice message, isn't it? You've put. I hope you find some smiles between these pages, which is a really nice thing to say. Well, you seem to find smiles everywhere, Claire. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, oh, we've had um, another... Uh, another. Um, <laughs> we've just got to, I'm just trying to read this on the live chat. Chloe Mason said, says, Yay, I thought so. I say to myself when climbing a tricky hill, I will cut through this hill like a hot knife through butter. So I suppose that's a mantra for her that she could like base I a poem like on. Very good. Um, and Rich Simpson said, um, I honestly, I only heard of you since Claire said you were coming on today and I found your poems to be very apt to myself and others. 
Um, Brilliant. And he also says, um, do your poem, are your poems memes? At what stage does a meme become a poem? So I suppose that requires us to know what a meme is. What's a meme? <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. My my idea of a meme is perhaps something that's uh, an idea that's made visual or a, a photograph from one situation turned into uh, something comic for another. Um, on social media, running Mr. Jones is on Twitter and running Mr. Jones is on Instagram. Um, a, a lot of the poems are set there as pictures. I'm not sure if that's, that's what he means, but they can be viewed uh, as pictures on Instagram. Um, my real home, my spiritual home, is on Twitter, I have to say. And I think if people really want a sense of who I am as a person, Twitter is the place to go. Yes, yeah. And I think to me, a meme is more picture-led, isn't it, with a little caption yes. underneath, whereas this is more yeah. word-led and the picture just illustrates um, what the words are saying. So that's that's what I would say to that. Um, and I've, I've got a couple of ideas for you. Um, and I was just wondering whether you would make your um, your poems into cards because I think people love to send um, little like cards to each other, you know, like congratulations for doing this race or um, isn't it a bummer that we're all still in lockdown, that kind of thing. Um, so you could do cards um, as yes. well, as well as the blocks and the prints on the wall. Yes, I, I definitely agree with you there. And I think something that a lot of other people have been asking about is a calendar. Oh, a calendar, as well. yes. I will definitely have a calendar for 21. You could do a poem every day calendar if you've got enough right Wow. Now. Wow. A poem okay. every week. We'll definitely have one every month. A poem every... <laughs> <laughs> yes. 12 nice big glossy pictures. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should do a little diary with a poem in each day. Yeah, yeah. Well, a you know, running like journal. Those ones that you have on your desk and you just you tear tear it off each day and it's like a little little one one for the day. That's quite nice. Stunning. Would you join the marketing team? Oh, running this I love ideas like this. <laughs> and I, I was also going to say to you um, that you should have some of them on, on t-shirts, like maybe not the whole poem, but like a, a bit more of a, like a meme type thing, of just like a, a couple of lines of the poem, like... Um, running helps ordinary people do extraordinary things. Something like that on a T-shirt would be cool. You know, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm, I guess I'm I'm wary of treading on other people's toes because some of the brand, the small brands that I like best, um, you know, companies like Runner, Runner's Heel, they they do amazing running kit. And uh, a, a race organizer, Run Through, who I really like, have just developed Run Through kits, mm. and I. I love the space that they occupy. I um, don't know about necessarily uh, treading on everybody else's toes. Yeah. It definitely, uh, the whole running Mr. Jones thing is not about uh, making money. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yes, it, they're great ideas and I guess we should explore them. Perhaps I need to be a bit more entrepreneurial. <laughs> I was just thinking, because they are so nice, I'd love to wear one as a t-shirt. Um, so maybe you could go into partnership with them, you know, like do a profit share or something. That might be a way of doing it. Uh, that That's a really great idea, and I hope that one of the runner boys is uh, <laughs> today. Yeah. I'll, I'll give them a call. <laughs> Rav's watching. She'll, she'll, she'll give, <laughs> she'll them, she'll a give them a call. She'll give them a call, yeah. <laughs> oh, and... And Rav has some information on memes here. She says, a meme is normally a humorous take on something. So not sure the poems can be mistaken for a meme. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I thought. It's like a funny caption to a picture, isn't it? Rather than, um, the poems are very insightful and they're, they're very powerful, I think. They're just, they're so they're so small and they're so short, but they, they really get to the nitty gritty of, of how you feel as a runner. So um, I, yeah, I just, I can't recommend them enough. Like, definitely just follow Alistair on Twitter, follow him on uh, Instagram as well, and um, and go buy the book, because it's it's just so inspiring. It's like the book to read when you, you know, you feel, whether you feel happy or sad, this is the book to read. Yeah. Can I ask you something, Claire? Yeah, sure. When, when, you go, when you get a little bit low, when your running goes off the boil, what have you found helps you through that? Um, just letting it go off the boil for a bit, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, just not trying to push it. Um, uh, because I know that sometimes you have bad days, sometimes you have good days, and sometimes you can have a bad month, and it might be due to other things like stress with other stuff. 
Um, sometimes it can happen for a bit of a long time and you think, oh goodness me, what is this about? Um, once that did happen to me and I just had a whole month off any exercise whatsoever because I thought maybe I'd been overtraining. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, often I, I go slower, I do something that's not running, um, so I go cycling, I go swimming, I used to go swimming. Um, and I, I do, I do read poems. So I, I will get dive into this book and read a couple of poems in there to inspire me. Um, but more often than not, I'll just go anyway, and then it usually turns out to make me feel a bit better. So, yeah, yeah. I just kind of force myself to go out anyway. <laughs> if it's on my training plan, then I will, I will do it. I'm, I'm very um, obedient. <laughs> I'm I'm really pleased you said that because I think ultimately that's the answer that I found. Just go um, anyway. That when you when you don't feel like it, go anyway. And it's surprising how how little distance you have to travel before you start feeling it again. Yeah. Or sometimes I trick myself actually. I wear running stuff, but I go on a walk. And I go, I'm just going on a walk, but I make sure I wear a sports bra on and some trainers. And then if I feel like doing a jog downhill or just I don't know, just jogging a flat bit or something, then I can still do that and often, more often than not, it does turn into a little run. Excellent, yeah. Yeah, take something the pressure I, off. Yeah, something I really love about uh, having an app like Strava, where it has your whole running history as well, I quite like being able to go back over that and seeing what you've accomplished in the past. But also seeing when you had little dips, when it went off, and how you were able to come back from that. I draw a lot of strength and encouragement from that. Sometimes it's nice to look back, but having that sort of, that permanent record that you can look back over, really, I find that very helpful to me. Yeah, it is nice, isn't it? And I really think um, uh, the, the bit of Strava where you can see your training log and everything is circles. Yeah. So you can, if it's a bigger circle, then you've gone for longer. I really like that as well. I like making the circles really big. <laughs> So when you do a, a good trail run, well, what sort of distance would you go for? Oh, it, it completely depends because trail running is very, it can be really hilly and really rocky. So it's not necessarily all about the distance. Um, in fact, some people, when they train for trail running, they actually log the vert, the vertical, the, yes. the ascent, rather than the distance that you go. And, and usually they'll log the time rather than the distance. So I would go for like, say, an hour to two hours. That would be like a general kind of, easy pace nice kind of steady long run for me um yeah and I just to go somewhere nice and, and explore and uh, to me finding a new trail is one of the most exciting things that you can do um so yeah just a couple of hours really and stopping to take in the views and and walk the uphills and jog the downhills we'll have to go we'll, we'll have to meet up in the peak district or somewhere and, and well you can come one of my training camps um, I think that has to be done. Yeah. I think that's on my bucket list now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll ping you some details. Yeah, um, that's superb. Brilliant. So shall we end on one final poem then? Um, before we say goodnight to you and oh you're doing you're doing a run later, aren't you? We we better let you go soon. <laughs> yeah, happily. Okay, here's a little poem to um to finish on. The beauty of running is that all can join in. It isn't restricted to the young and the thin. You don't have to go far or keep up a pace. It's about taking part, not just winning a race. You must have the willpower to get out of the door and to carry on going when your legs say no more. Oh, that's brilliant. I really like that one. I just I just want, can you make wallpaper? I just want wallpaper <laughs> of all your poems. Maybe I just need to buy enough of those printed wall blocks to just like, cover the wall. Because there, there's just something for everyone in there. <laughs> I just don't know where it all comes from. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. Or what, do you have a day job as well? Yes, yes, I print things. <laughs> oh, okay. So that explains why everything looks really beautiful. Um, so do you print books or what kind no, of things? No, art catalogues mainly. Ah, okay. Ah, and so poems is just a hobby. That's It's absolutely amazing. Um, thank you. And I'd just like to say thank you so much for chatting to us tonight, Alistair. It's been really lovely. It's been an absolute pleasure, Claire, and I have to say, you, you are such an inspiring person. Oh, thank you. You really are. You, <laughs> well, you're so supportive of the whole running community. You go out there and you do it with a smile. And um, you, when I watch you, 
it just makes me want to run oh, and that's wow. such a great gift you had oh great oh that's brilliant um that's very kind of you to say that um that that is my job so uh i, I can assure you it's all completely fake no it's not really <laughs> <laughs> um, um graham um has he just wants to ask the final question um he says how many poems have you written do you know um i think there's probably about 450 flying around now, about 450. So you have got one for every day of the year for the calendar? One for every day of the year. Sorted, done, already. <laughs> little block yeah. that you ripped off. Yeah, <laughs> or a little book. Expect to see it soon, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll see it, we'll put it in the wild ginger running shop. <laughs> um, but yes, seriously, thank you so much, because this has been really brilliant, and I am going to this weekend write a poem. Um, I just want to read out some nice things that people um, are saying about you. Um, so John Nyston says, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this interview. Um, Graham A. Window Cleaner says, enjoyed this. Thanks. Um, so that is absolutely amazing. Um, Rich Simpson says, oh, where's he gone? Um, Rich Simpson says, get on Radio 4 Poetry, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, wouldn't it? Um, I think Radio 4 would be very much my natural home as well, <laughs> as an old ageing runner. Yeah. <laughs> Love a bit of Radio 4, can't beat it. Um, Chloe Mason says, thanks for the lovely chat. What a, what a lovely guest and a refreshing change because usually I have like elite athletes and coaches on here. So I was really, I was really excited about this one. So I was like, oh, this is a chance to talk about something completely different. It's great. Um, yeah, so everybody says thank you so much. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, they, it's just, they keep coming up. Um, Guy says it was so lovely, thank you. Um, Hannah says, loved listening to this tonight. So um, they have said it better than I can. Um, Thank you so much, Alistair. It's been absolutely amazing to chat to you. Thank you. Total pleasure, Claire. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Um, so good night, everybody. And um, we'll see we'll see you on the trails, hopefully, Alistair, sometime. Oh, sometime you will, in the yeah.